Welcome to Advanced Toyota Hybrid Diagnostics. Bill Peake and I have been collaborating for 20 years. We are the leaders in diagnostic procedure development and training programs. If you need to get a hold of Bill, it's mpcbill at earthlink.net and myself, it's docnall at hughes.net. Now this is a continuing class in the hybrid series. Hybrid operation and diagnostics was the first part of the hybrid series. We told you in that class that we're going to go deeper and more detailed. We're going to go advanced in the follow-up classes and this is one of the follow-up classes. This class does not cover basic hybrid operation. If you need to review motors or if you forget how a motor works or how it's controlled, feel free to review hybrid basics in the hybrid operation and diagnostic class. When we talk about advanced diagnostics, you're going to have to have three things, knowledge, equipment, and information. Knowledge is required to show you how to recognize normal operation, whereas information is the roadmap to locate the cause of abnormal operation. Then, of course, we use equipment so you can see how to get the most out of your equipment in the service bay. What will you need when that first hybrid shows up in the service bay? A scan tool that addresses the vehicle, of course. A CAT-3 DVOM and a CAT-3 insulation tester. Now, I have the DVOM with the built-in insulation tester, but if you have a CAT-3 high-quality DVOM, then all you need to purchase is the insulation tester. And you're going to have to have a digital storage scope and an information system. No matter which information system you have, you're going to have to look up certain schematics, specification, and in some cases, how a code was set. So, you use your information. And most of our people that we work with understand we write our own books. We write our own procedures. So this class has a manual. It's the Toyota Prius Detailed Diagnostic Manual. And that's what we're really going to use. Pages out of that for this training course. And you're going to have to use your computerized information system, online information system, or your books. Oh, or go to the, the, the manufacturer. Now this is what the inside of our manual looks like. You can see in this particular page we're going to show you a code, the B2278. And we're going to give you a description. The two power switch signals, SS1 and SSW. That's going to indicate different signals. The switch is bad or there's a wiring problem if this code is set. Now this is a pull down circuit that when the, you press the switch, it is supplying the ground. And then, of course, we're going to draw the circuit for you. We're going to show you cavities and the names of the circuits. In this case, these two circuits are named SSW1 and 2. They're cavities that they're on in the power source control ECU is 37 and 14 over at the power switch themselves, they're SS1 and SS2 without the W. So we show it to you that way so you don't get confused and the cavities are 7 and 5. And then we talk about the ground circuit all the way to where it grounds. Now, that's the information we're going to be using. You're going to have to go to your information and look up 2278 and use that information. Here's an example of a specification. Sometimes it's just a simple voltage. It should be 4.5 volts all the time. Well, in this case, it should be a signal, an amplified signal. And in both of these, we can show you what the signal should look like. Here on the transponder key ECU connector signals, on pin 6, you can see that's called, the name of it is, TXCT and key insert signal transmitted when the key is inserted in the slot. 
what's the signal and we show you a photo of it there now this could be called Toyota Prius Diagnostics we're going to talk about Priuses we're going to use Prius as the common denominator here or as the demonstration because Priuses are more prevalent out there in the world than any other hybrid vehicle this class uses the Prius you can use the information gleaned from this training course on other Toyota vehicles as well as other hybrids but we chose one vehicle the most popular Toyota out there for hybrids and that's Prius and we're going to talk about the first and second generation the first generation came in 2000 the second generation 04 the first generation Prius is here in a block drawing and you can see it goes from the HV battery pack to the inverter now just look at that line there because that's really what we're going to talk about the differences in the first and second generation Priuses not just trim packages you know we're not going to talk about that but what's inside and what will be the difference when you're diagnosing them you can see that we boxed in for the second generation and it has a boost converter in it and we'll talk about that and it also has an air conditioning inverter in it that means that the air conditioner is now a three phase motor and the hybrid vehicle battery pack voltage is going to go through an inverter the air conditioning inverter before it goes to the air compressor now in Gen 1 that air compressor was belt driven and in Gen 2 it's electric motor driven so you can see that there are some differences along with all the trim package stuff what are our objectives for this training program we want to discuss the operation of hybrid control modules not electric motors not electric generators but the modules themselves what module is in charge of what part of the hybrid operation we want to discuss diagnostic trouble codes and relate them to a diagnostic process that you can actually do when we talk about DTC's diagnostic trouble codes we're going to say this code is set when under what conditions we're going to tell you how to diagnose that and you understand right away we are not going to be able to cover every hybrid diagnostic trouble code on a Prius in one training session so we've chosen examples and in the manual we show you all of the diagnostic codes and of course you can go to your information system and find all of the diagnostic trouble codes there